critical problems in the, in the, in the theory when, when, when you discuss measurements. Yeah? In particular, this, in, the, in the last years, there's a, a quite a revolution in the in understanding of quantum phenomena according to these to this weak measurements and also to these weak values with, with spot selecting the data. In particular, one of these nice uh, things that can be done with these weak values is just computing uh, velocities. Computing velocities, and uh, this was the work of Weisman that was the first to propose this type of, of measuring local velocities in quantum systems. Okay, but I will not discuss, in my talk I will not discuss about photons, I will discuss basically about electrons. And the point is why, why I want to discuss about electrons, <coughs> and there are several reasons. One is that we, we will play with something a little more simple, just with the, with the Schrodinger equation, without relativistic effects, with, a, with no creation of particles. The other point is that Boomian mechanics is very well, is very well uh, established for, for non-relativistic scenarios. And in fact, and in fact this, this, uh, this, um, this when, you, when you discuss about, about, uh, about uh, non-relativistic quantum mechanics, these trajectories are just the natural local velocities in Boomian mechanics. If you, if you go beyond non-relativistic Boomian mechanics, then it's not clear at all what, what, what is the meaning of, the, of these trajectories. And, and, and there is another reason why I want to, 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 to work with electrons is because uh, we are now in the second quantum revolution when, when these, all these quantum phenomena want to be used for technological uh, applications. And uh, it, it, can be, it, can be, it can be useful to make all these, all these quantum proposals with electrons, basically because it is fully compatible with the typical technology that we have uh, now today in our computers. Okay, so the, 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 my talk will be divided into two parts. <coughs> In the first part, I will discuss a little about this, this Boomian, this Boomian uh, uh, pointer, and then I will discuss about weak measurements of the displacement current of electrons. Okay, so uh, let us discuss a little about the quantum theories and the measurement problem. It has been formulated in this way that, that the measurement problem is basically that if you want that, that your, uh, your theory is linear, have a linear wave equation, um, the measurement for just one, one particular outcome and the wave function is complete, you have problems to reproduce experiments. Not all three, all three claims can be true. And then you have to decide which one do you, you don't like it. If you say, I don't like it, the linear wave equation, <coughs> then you are in the Copenhagen or GRW theories where they substitute the, 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 the linear equation by a new, a new equation, in particular in the Copenhagen, they use, sometimes they use Schrodinger equation, time, sometimes they use the Collat law. Which time they use one is a little, a little, um, <coughs> little confusing, and the GRW theory is just all the time is using a stochastic Schrodinger equation. But you have other possibilities saying, okay, I, don't, I, I will not accept that, that, that the measurement provides just one determinant outcome. The, the, the measurement provides all the, all the possible outcomes, one in one world, one in another world. Then you are in the many worlds. <coughs> and you can also say that, well, I will not accept that the wave function is complete. And I think that there is something else about the wave function. In particular, in Boomian mechanics, they say that this, there is real positions of the particles <coughs> to, to explain quantum phenomena. And I will work a little on this. And I explain one typical example that is just an electron in a tunneling barrier. <coughs> and, uh, and if you use just the wave function, the wave function for an electron, you will have something like this. Just, this is just the wave function, and it's partially transmitted and partially reflected. So according to this, if you don't put collapse here, you will understand that, 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 the, that the transmission of electrons is half, half uh, each time you have to, uh, half of transmitted electron and half, and half reflected. But this is false because we know experimentally that this, this, there is partition noise. Yeah, so this, this obviously this is wrong because we need collapse in the orthodox theory and in the, we, need, we need something like this. We need some, some wave functions <coughs> that evolve in this way. You see this is, this is a wave packet in between a barrier, it's partially separated, but this is a, a reflected wave packet, this disappears and you have only transmitted part. And here disappears the reflected part and you have only transmitted part. These are conditional wave functions in the Boomian language. I will explain carefully what is, uh, uh, <coughs> what is this conditional wave function. Okay, to make measurement in Boomian mechanics, you have to add just one additional degree of freedom, what is called the pointer. Unless you have to, to add uh, one, one addition. So this is the, the Schrodinger equation. This is, the syst this is the, 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 your system, this is your pointer. This is some potential for the system, and this interaction between the pointer this, it's, and this, this degree of freedom, yeah? And then you have a two-dimensional uh, problem instead of one-dimensional problem to study, to study this system. So this is the same, the same problem. This is a wave packet impinging in a barrier. But now you see this is the, 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 the system uh, degree of freedom and this is the pointer degree of freedom. And then <coughs> you select one of these trajectories. For example, you select this, this trajectory. You select this trajectory here. You see that basically this is the, wave, the relevant wave packet that you get. 
And this wave function, according to teaching this position, is this wave function that you see here. You see here there is nothing because here there is nothing. But if you, in another experiment you select another, another trajectory, well, you don't select, you select it by, by, by yourself. For example, this, this trajectory, what you see is that now there is nothing here, now there is nothing here, and basically you plot this wave function. These are the conditional wave function. This is something very particular to the, to the Boomian theory and very useful because it's the wave function of a subsystem. This is not the whole system, just the subsystem when I, when I just look for the system in some particular uh, environment, yeah? Okay, okay, but uh, okay, let us discuss that this picture is a little naive, a little naive and it has to improve a little. Why, why, why this picture is a little naive? So in the Boomian measurement, the, 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 Boom, the Boomians are very proud to say that there is no special postulate for treating Boomian measurement, that you don't need to say that now it's the collapse, now it's not collapse, there is nothing, nothing special for a measurement because the measurement is any interaction <coughs> And it was the position of the, of, the, of, the, of the wave function that breaks the superposition. But uh, this is what more or less what you see here, but this is true, but then it seems that, that, the, that the pointer is just one degree of freedom. And it seems that by looking at this, at this degree of freedom, that it will, be, it, will be, it will be put here, if I look at this here, this point here, I am able to reproduce exactly the trajectory. So this is very strange. This is very strange and this is wrong. This is wrong because this is a, a very naive way of understanding what is a, what is a pointer. And the point is that, that this is just a toy model and a pointer has to be taken much more seriously than, than just one degree of freedom. And this is what I wanted to do now here. Okay, basically uh, a measuring apparatus try, uh, has to connect the classical world, the, classi the quantum world with the classical world. This has to be done through this, this, this measurement uh, process, yeah? And the pointer has to be a macroscopic object. At some point it has to be macroscopic and this then when it arrives to, to our, uh, uh, we, we, will we will realize of the experiment when, when it's a classical object, yeah? So <coughs> in the Boomian theory, that is an holistic theory that, that wants to explain everything, it's obvious that, that they have to explain also somehow this border between the classical and the quantum, yeah? So it has to, it has to be explained if you, if you really want to, to explain the measuring problem, you have to, to explain how is this natural connection between the quantum and classical transition, and that's what I wanted to do now in this point. Okay, so this is a classical object, <coughs> and this is, um, is, sorry, it's a classical object, but it's all, it is also a quantum object, so it's, it's a solution of the, of the, of the Schrodinger equation, but the, for a very large number of particles, yeah? And our idea was, will, will be just to treat it, to, 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 to know wh when we arrive to the classical system, is just looking at the center of mass, yeah? If we look at the center of mass, it has some two advantages. The first advantage is that, is that the transition is something quite uh, diffuse and quite natural, yeah? Because, because the center of mass for a very few particles is pure quantum, I, 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 I start to increase the, 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 the number of particles, <coughs> it, it starts to become classical, more classical, more classical, and for a large number of particles, it, it will be classical. And it has an another advantage looking for the center of mass, is that I can say that the center of mass is classical even if the particles are quantum. It says that this pointer has a, has a, a classical dynamics, but inside all the particles are quantum, and in fact, I have a laser here, so obviously each of the particles is classical, but they have still, it's compatible, this idea is compatible with, with the classical behavior. Okay, so what are the conditions for a classical center of mass? <coughs> These are the conditions. The condition is that for most of the experiments that I try to, 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 to reproduce in different, uh, with, with, with identical situation, I reproduce the same experiment, they have to give me the, the same trajectory for the center of mass. These M are different experiments and these are the center of mass of different experiments. And what I am saying is that this average has to be equal to one value because all values have the same value. But this average is just, is just an ensemble. So if this happens, it's very not because the Rehmfeld's theorem and, uh, and, this, and just one experiment is equal to the ensemble of experiment, it's very natural to say that we know from the Rehmfeld's theorem that it will follow a classical trajectory. This also this condition too, but it's just, it's just technical to be sure that, 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 that we can make some, some, we can take this, this derivative from, from uh, outside of the, of the mean value, but this is not very important. The important is just this part here. But this is also a very important point. I'm not discussing the classical behavior for an ensemble of experiments. I am discussing the, the classical behavior for just one experiment, for just this experiment, yeah? But I'm using the knowledge of the te uh, LMFS theorem because, because of the relation here. Okay, but there are quantum states that, that satisfy this condition one. And the answer is yes, <coughs> we have defined this quantum state full of identical particles, that is this state that satisfies this condition. And I will explain what, what is this. This in here, you have some distribution that is just, this is the different experiments and this is just one particle. So you take one particle, in one experiment you take this particle, in another experiment all these particles are identical, in another experiment you take another Boomian particle, in another experiment you take another Boomian particle, and when you make a lot of experiments you have some distribution of these particles, yeah? And, uh, <coughs> 
and, uh, from, and you compare with this distribution. This distribution is just for one particular experiment but for all the particles. So you get all the particles distributed in this way and if this distribution is equal to this distribution, it can be very easily demonstrated that this, is this, this quantum state has a classical uh, center of mass. Okay, and here is an, a very simple example. This is my many body state, this is my many body state that is uh, full of identical particles and there is, this is very simple, it's just uh, a boson state with all the, all the electrons are not interacting, they have exactly the same wave function and this wave function is plotted here. This wave function is plotted here. And if you just look for one, one wave function, you can make many trajectories. And then will be just the typical, if these trajectories are different experiments, this will be just the RMFS theorem. But I, I can interpret this result in another way. This is just one experiment with a lot of particles and this is this one particle, this is another particle, but all the particles in the same experiment according to this wave function. And then because I know that this mean, mean value is, follows a classical trajectory, I know that the mean value from a single experiment will also follow this, 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 this trajectory. Okay, so how the quantum randomness disappear? I have this, this plane and, and I take the plane another, another time, the same plane in, a, in the same situation, and I take it another time, and there is quantum randomness, yes, there is quantum randomness, but there is so much quantum randomness that you have no classical, that, that the center of mass is almost the same, yeah? So this is why, why my, 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 my center of mass has no, has no randomness and has this classical behavior. Okay, another question is, okay, but this center of mass is just a classical, uh, it's just a quantum particle. It can be a classical particle, but by construction, it's just a degree of freedom of a quantum system. So it has to have his own ways of equation. Yeah, and it's true, yeah? This is, this is uh, the many body Schrodinger equation. We make this change of variables in the center of mass and these relative coordinates, and then we make the conditional wave function. We just look at the, at the, at the, at the center of mass according to some, some particular experiment with this movement trajectory. And this is the question that we get it. This is the question that we get it. This is, a, this is what is called the, the classical Schrodinger equation. The classical Schrodinger equation where you have this additional term that is the quantum potential written in this way, yeah? Uh, and you have here some experiment. This is a Schrodinger equation. This is the classical, the classical, the solution for the classical, um, for the classical Schrodinger equation. These are the trajectories, and these are, these are the trajectories for this solution. These are Newton equations. Yeah, so, so they are, they are, these and these are exactly equal. Yeah. And here you have some, 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 some result. Is you, what you see is that in blue you see the typical evolution of a free, free space in Schrodinger equation, and in red you see this solution of the of the classical Schrodinger equation. And basically you see that the, the wave packet is not, is, not, uh, is not spreading. The wave packet is just concentrated. And the reason is because the question that I showed to you, this equation, is, is non-linear. Because this, this equation, this depends also in the, in the, in the models of the wave function. So this, this is a non-linear equation. This is a non-linear equation, so you are breaking all the typical rules of the, of the Schrodinger equation. But this is not surprising because this is not the, the, this is not the, the, the question of the, of the whole quantum system. It's just the question of a subsystem. My subsystem is just the center of mass and all the rest of the particles are just the environment of my particle. So basically this is just a, subs a subsystem and a subsystem do not, do not have to satisfy this, this law that we have, we have defined. Okay, so let us discuss a realistic macroscopic, uh, realistic macroscopic um, um, quantum state. <coughs> and I will, say, uh, I will say this. This is my quantum state, this is my pointer. And my pointer is a quantum state full of identical particles. At the initial time there is no problem because there is no entanglement. Then at same times there is entanglement and what happens, I will explain more carefully, but what happens is that now all this state, because this is full, but this is empty, this, is not, uh, this, is not, uh, f uh, this cannot be considered a quantum state full of integral particles, so during this time, they cannot have a classical evolution, they have a quantum evolution. And then after the measurement, they, they, are dis they become disentangled and this is just a classical pointer. Okay, let me discuss more carefully what I, what I mean during the time of the measurement. This is the Schrodinger equation for, for, the, for the quantum system and uh, these are the pointers. And these are the interaction between my pointer, my, my pointer and, my, and, my, and my, the rest of the existing system. This is, has to be an I, yeah? Okay, so if my, if my particle is here, if my particle is here, this will take a, some particular value and all the particles will change according to this. So all the particles will, will appear in this, in, this, in this region. If my initial particle randomly in my quantum state is in the other side, what happens is that this value will be zero, so this will, not, this, this will have no effect to the other particles, and all the other particles will have a different behavior than before, and they will all, all stay here. So what happens is that now, if I look at here, if I look at here, it is, is, it is uh, for all experiments, just one particle, sometimes this particle is here, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here, so my distribution will be something like this. But if I look at this, at this distribution that is just, uh, one, uh, <coughs> just for one experiment where are all the particles, I will say that all the particles are here, all the particles are here, but not here and here. So this is not true. This, this is not true for this, for this state, 
and that's why it has no classical behavior during the interaction. And basically, this, this is just a macroscopic superposition during the me measuring process. So I am saying that I have explained to you more carefully what is, what is a, a pointer in boomia mechanics and why it's able to, to make these measurements. And I will change the topic and I will use these ideas just to discuss which measurements of the displacement current of electrons. First, I will explain to you what is the displacement current. The displacement current for, for electronics is basically, this is just a typical electronic setup, this is just the device, this is just uh, some ca cables that connect with, with my uh, meter to, to, to measure the current. And, uh, and in fact, this is the current that I, that, that I measure and this is the current that I compute. And the point is they are equal, they, they are equal because this current is not just, this, this computed current is not just the flux of electrons, it's, it's not just transit of electrons, but it's the total current. The total current is just, is because I want a conservation law, a, a local conservation law, I want to satisfy this law, I want to satisfy this law, and the only, the only mm, property that satisfies this law is just this. It's just this is the particle current plus the displacement current that is related with the time dependence of the electrical field, yeah? Uh, this is because just this, this continuity question, you put this equation here and you, you arrive to here. So I have to play with all these currents. And in particular, at very low frequency, only this is important, but at high frequency, this, this is important. And basically, I want to work with this and try to extract information from, from this. Okay, so let us discuss uh, <coughs> uh, boomian mechanic, bo bo the boomian, dis uh, the, the, the displacement current from unmeasured boomian mechanics. This is what, what means unmeasured boomian mechanics? This is something that you can do with boomian mechanics, but you cannot do with other theories. Obviously, you can, you can ask, why, why is this useful for? Okay, this is, this is another question, but this will provide me some, some intuition of what will happen. I am saying that we will not put a pointer yet. I will put pointer later, but now we will not put a pointer and I will just discuss what, what I can expect from the current. I will work in this way. <coughs> This is, this is just a technique to solve many body problems with these boomian trajectories. Let's say this is a two-dimensional problem for Coulomb interaction. And these are the trajectories that I get from one, these are two particles, particle one and particle two, and they, they are basically reflected by the Coulomb interaction. But I am using a, a, a technique that is basically working with this conditional wave function. It says, I work, this is the wave function of my particle one when my boomian trajectory is this one. And this is just a single particle equation. This is a single particle equation that you see here. And this is the potential for this particle that, that, that changes with time because it's changing with time. And this is just how you compute the trajectory. And this is the conditional wave function for another particle that is just the, the, the wave function, the, the Schrodinger equation, but fixing one position for the first particle. I am just moving the second particle. This technique, uh, you have to make some approximation, but this, this technique gives you some, some solution of the many body problems with single particle Schrodinger equations. And basically in this, in this point you will see that this is the wave function and this is just the potential, this is just the potential. So for me, it will be very, very, very easy to compute the electrical field and to compute the time derivative of the electrical field and compute the displacement current. Okay, this is the displacement current that I am working, uh, I'm, I'm looking for. This is the ramos shockley pellegrini uh, theorem that says that th this is another way of writing this, this, this current with this function f that you can find it, define it here on the original papers of Ramo and Shockley. And basically the important point when you want to do with boomian mechanics is that this current, that is just the, the typical current of quantum mechanics, in the boomian case is just the sum of the, of the, of the boomian velocity multiplied by the charge and, by, uh, and, and <coughs> with a delta function that, that makes this appear this integral here. So basically I'm saying that this plasma current has some relation with the velocity. Okay. Okay, so here there is an, an, uh, this is a, a simulation. I am still working with and measuring displacement current. I have no pointer, I have made nothing, so in principle it's something a little strange, yeah? Okay, but this is, this is just a boomian trajectory, and this I compute the electrical field in this, in this surface, and this is what, what, what the time derivative of, the, of this electrical field in all this surface. And here you have different, different dif the same current for the same experiment by changing this lateral area. For a very large lateral area, this is very large lateral area. To a very small lateral area, this is when, it, when it's very small. And I have this behavior. This behavior is the behavior of the F. That is just what, what I explained to you that depends on this, yeah? And what you see, what you see is that basically, basically, um, if, you are, if, you're, if, you're, if your area here is very small, if your area here is very small, only when the electron is very close, you have to take some current, yeah? But if your area is very, very, very large, very large, very large, then if you are here or you are here, basically the flux that you get in this surface is more or less the same. So there is no change because you are changing the position. There is only change because you are changing, when you make the derivative of this, of this flux, it's only change because of the velocity. So here, you basically have a, something related with a position detector. It says when you are close to here, you have a peak in the current, and here you, you have something related with the, with the, with the velocity uh, detector. Yeah. 
this is what, what I have explained. I, I might have explained that this electrical field, independently of this surface, when this surface is very large like this, it has a constant value equal to the charge. So when, when the surface is very large, it doesn't matter how is the distance from, from here to the surface, you get always the same value. And then when you make this derivative, you make a special derivative that is basically this constant, and then the derivative of the boomian trajectory that gives you basically the velocity. Okay, let us move and, and, and do it correctly. Let us m discuss boomian measure displacement current with a pointer, yeah? With a pointer, what means with a pointer? With a pointer means that, okay, let us discuss everything or let's include much more power, uh, something that we, we can call the pointer until we have some classical behavior. After we have some classical behavior, we know that everything will be very easy. Okay, so what we, do, what we are doing is that in, instead of simulating just a particle, we'll simulate the particle and this contact, and this contact here with a lot of, of different particles. Something like this, something like this, and basically the point is that I will use this technique for many bodies that is, I will use a wave function and a boomian particle, and then I am able to, instead of discussing the many body wave function, I discuss many single particle wave functions, yeah? Interacting because, because the potential, yeah? And what I get is this. This is the, the boomian trajectory, this is the, the, the current, the total current for some, for some particular, is the total current for some particular uh, experiment without the emitter. And this is what I get when I put the emitter. Yeah, when I put the emitter, basically what you see here is that there is a lot, a lot of noise because of the fluctuations of the electrons in the contact, yeah? But even if there is a lot of noise, if I make an histogram here, I, I reproduce this result. It says that, well, there is, a, there is a, the, 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 the current that you get is very, very noisy. But in average, but, uh, but in average, it will provide me the correct average of my particle without contact, yeah? And in fact, it depends on the frequency. If I, if I am starting to reduce, to, to, to reduce the frequency that I am working, I am starting to have a more and more accurate value of my current, yeah? This is just what I mentioned that in, in, a, in, a, in a low frequency, there is only particle current and there is almost no DC current. And I can also make another experiment that is, is what is the error in my wave function when I increase the distance between the contact and my, and my, and my, and my wave packet. And I see again that the larger, the, the far I am, I am in, the, in, the, in, the, in the distance between my wave packet and the contact, the lower the error, yeah? And the, 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 the warm the information that I get is. Yeah, I get much more noise than, than just signal. So I realized this is, this is done for a very large surface. This is done for a very large surface. So I realized that for a very large surface, the current that I am measuring, the displacement current that I am measuring is basically a weak measurement of the momentum. And I, I have also convinced to you that for a small uh, surface, what I get is a strong, a strong measurement of the position. Okay, so what we have done is just this, is just, we, got, we, we, will, we, will, we will compute this. We want to compute this, uh, this ensemble value, <coughs> um, and we will use this, 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 something like this. Something like this means the, the electrons from here to here, and there is a large surface here, and there is more surface here. This will be used to compute the momentum, and this will be used to compute the, posi the position. Basically, <coughs> because this large is, is, we have convinced that it's, it's just related with, a, with a, some weak uh, measurement of the momentum, and this very short surface is just related with some um, strong, this is the strong measurement of the, of the position. This has to be much smaller than this. This sigma has to be much smaller than this. Okay, and then we will, we will, com we will try to, to, to convince ourselves is just by measuring the displacement current here without any other approximation, just measuring the displacement current, we can reproduce this, this expression. So what we do is just a weak value. It means that we make some Monte Carlo boomian uh, simulations. We compute the displacement current in the left and the displacement current in each one of these of this, of this parts here, yeah? We make many simulations during many times and then we treat the data. The, tra the data, we treat the data in this way. Okay, we post-select all the momentum that we get from here and only take the ones that we finally detect some particle in this, in this position. And, and the same for the other positions here. And then with this, we make some experiments <coughs> and we can reproduce what is the boomian velocity in, a, in, a, in something similar to a double slit experiment. And this is, this is just the exact boomian velocity that you can, that, that you can expect, and this is, just the, this is just what we get after the, after the measurement. This is the mean value and the error that we get it. And with this, with this, with this velocities, with this velocity computed just from the displacement current, we can construct these trajectories that are in agreement with what, with what we expect. Okay. We have also some, some additional ideas. It's just, just looking at some GPS structure that means, okay, if, that, if, if this is something between a momentum detector and a position detector, I can put several of them and just computing what is the electrical field feeling in each of these positions, I will have some information on the, on the not exactly on the position, not exactly on the momentum, but by a proper triangulation, I can have uh, some information of, 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 of both uh, magnitudes. I can also make a structure like this with this large surface 
will provide some measurement, some position measurement, and this is strong some position, some position measurement. The point here is that is that all these contexts have a lot of particles, so have a lot of noise. So it's, 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 it's just a weak measurement. So okay, so the two methods of my talk is just <coughs> a measuring apparatus connects the quantum and the classical world, and Boomian mechanics as a holistic theory explains this connection. That is not trivial, and I think I, I have tried to convince you that the Boomian theory explains this connection. And the second method is that you can do, you can do weak measurements of displacement current of electrons, and <coughs> this is an interesting tool for, for practical applications and also for fundamental applications. Okay, and that's all. This is the acknowledgement. Okay. There is no uh, constraint on velocity or, or of the particle in Bohmian mechanics, uh, and in uh, electrons level, uh, we do uh, predict, uh, Bohmian mechanics predict that electron can travel faster than the speed of light. Uh, speed of a particle can be greater than the speed of light. No, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, well, I gradient of S upon m. I can, I, can I can explain you the, the idea. The idea is I am using non-relativistic quantum mechanics. You, you, you want to discuss this, you have to go a little further. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, in Bohmian mechanics, the velocity of particle mm -hmm. uh, is gradient of S upon M, right? Yeah, but you are talking about non-relativistic. You, you, you mentioned M, so it's non-relativistic uh, quantum mechanics. If, if not, we have to be careful. Uh, this has been a study. This is not a problem at all. This has, this has been a study that I, I am talking about the Schrodinger equation, so don't ask me relativistic effects in, in, my, in my approach because it will not give you. But if you are looking for these, these details, this has been discussed in some okay. papers, and I can, okay. I can explain to you. <coughs> in your earlier slide, you mentioned large S, yeah. weak measurement, yeah. small S. Can you explain this a yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you yeah. Mean? yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah. For, for example, here, for example, here, I, I am, I am, what, what, I, what I am taking, I am taking the electrical field that these electrons in the contact uh, feel because of these electrons, yeah? And also, because it's, it's the current, it has integrated in all, you know, in, in one surface, yeah? It's integrated in one surface. So the point is, is related with well, the concept, this concept of flux, that is just, in, this, this electron moving, and this electron moving it just generates an electrical field here, yeah? It's an electrical field. Then I integrate this. And the point, the point is that if you are very far and your surface is very, very large, for example, if the surface is like this, if I am here, the electrical field that I will generate will be exactly the same as I am here. It will be exactly the same, yeah? So the flux, it, it will not change if the surface is very large, if I am here or I am here, I'm here. So when I make the time derivative, I will say the time derivative of something that, that is moving does not change in the position, but then I will have to make the derivative of the, of the of the, of the Boomian position moving, and that's why it's proportional to velocity in this large situation, and that's why it provides information of the momentum, of the quantum momentum. And if the surface is very short, then what happens is, is that because the electrical field depends on one over, there, over D, so if this, if this is very short, this is nothing, 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 and now I see something, now I see so something. So, so, so if, if, if the large and short uh, surface makes, a, makes the transition between position measurement and momentum measurement. Weak no, 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 we no, no. It's a, it's a weak measurement. It's, it's a weak measurement weak because 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 I have explained well. incorrectly. I have explained that as you are measuring the electrical field of this particle, this is not true. I am measuring the electrical field of, of everything, all the electrons in this surface, and also this. But because there are a lot of a lot, a lot of electrons surface, so basically I only get noise. I only get noise because I am I am measuring all this all the all the displacement current of all the electrons, including this. But all these electrons are in a contact. And the behavior is tries to minimize tries to minimize his electrical field. This no, this this has not this restriction. So basically, in average, but I have to make a lot of average in, in a large average. I will see something related with this with this electron here. Okay. Anyway, so this is a weak measurement. Later. We can talk later. Mm -hmm.